What is up, friends? This is Alex, and today you're gonna see the you know, footage of me composing this thing from scratch. This thing here is a, a sketch, and we're gonna listen to it in a few seconds. Basically, uh, four weeks ago, I asked on my community tab here on YouTube, what type of tracks would you like to see me make in the future? And uh, the one that won was the fantasy, relaxing, Jeremy Soul type of track, which is why I made that cover two weeks ago, and the tutorial last week. And next, after that, there was an original really slow motion type of trailer track. Now, this started with that intention, but it ended up being something more like interstellar-ish sci-fi music, with still a bit of a trailer edge to it, but it's not perfectly trailer. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna play it now. Again, not mixed, not mastered, not orchestrated, just a sketch. I should also say, sorry, I'm pausing this, to say that in this part, you have a few of my vocals coming in. It's just a placeholder for guitars. You know, I just put it there, but it's not gonna be there in the end. Anyway, let's... Uh, Listen to the song. So this thing took me around seven hours to make, and now I have to orchestrate and humanize it and balance it. It's going to take way more hours. But I recorded the whole process of me going from a blank project file to this in all those seven hours. In this first episode, you're going to see me compose the intro, you know, from the intro to the build up. In the next episodes, which are going to be available on my Patreon page for those who support me there, you're going to see me compose the build up, the climax, the stinger and the outro. And if you want to access my Patreon page, it's on the description of this video. Also. I was thinking of making this sort of composing from scratch videos live on Twitch, where you can, you know, interact with me while I compose, etc. So if you're interested in making, in seeing me making these sort of things on Twitch live, then follow me on Twitch. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video. If I don't get, you know, followers on Twitch, it means people are not interested, so I'm not going to do it. So if you want to see me do it, leave a follow on Twitch. And uh, yeah, with that said, let's now get into the footage of me composing this freaking intro which by the way is a bit messy like the whole project like the whole way in which i composed this was kind of messy experimental sci-fi things like what the hell i'm having lots of fun but also i'm kind of questioning myself on the time and you know it might be boring to watch so you know you 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 judge you be the judge if you want to see it or not but let's uh check it out hey what's up guys this is alex and this is an empty template because today we're gonna try to compose another track from scratch and it's gonna be the Trailer, like really slow motion style trailer song. Uh, for those of you who do not know it, like I used to work as a composer for movie trailers. That was my job. 
a few years ago. I used to work with Really Slow Motion, End of Silence, Colossal Trade of Music, and all those you know big labels. Uh, I used to make music for them, and some of my songs got, got used in movie trailers. So this was kind of my upgr- upbringing in a way. But uh, as you might have heard in my, in my vlogs where I talk about philosophy and business uh, advice, etc., it came to a point for me where I really felt like trailer music wasn't the thing I wanted to do anymore because it felt kind of limiting. As you're going to see throughout the process of, this, of the, composing this song, in trailer music there's lots of formulas you need to follow all the time, lots of cliches that need to be there for reasons. There is a certain structure that is always like this sort of crescendo, structurized in different parts. And that sort of like factory, you know, I'd, I'd say approach, uh, produces many tracks that really resemble each other and they work in a movie trailer so nicely. But in having all those limitations, in my mind, in my opinion, they don't like, they, they uh, end up most times sounding not very much creative. Uh, and not very much original, not very much orchestrated and expressive. It's always the same thing, but put in different like contexts, but always the same thing. So that's why I stopped making this music because I really felt if, like, I'm not saying that this is, this is like that for everyone, but for me, for what I want to do, for the music I love, uh, trailer music is kind of like, uh, you know, a limitation. So after a while, you know, in the beginning, I didn't know anything about it and mastering it was interesting. But after I kind of mastered it, I kind of got results. Like my music was using trailers and stuff like that. And I started getting placements. I noticed that what I did was always rehashing the same ideas in a different way. And, uh, you know, that's not something I wanted to do. I wanted to explore more about orchestration and stuff like that. So today we're going to see... Uh, how much of a progress I have made. And this is like a great way to put pressure on me uh, about this song. I'm actually going to write this just for fun. And also because I want to, you know, make a tutorial about trailer music because I know, I know many of you guys out there might be working on trailer music or might be wanting to get into that field. So let's uh, see if I can write a trailer song after a few years of not writing any and uh, give you advice based on what I learned in my past, you know, years of composing this sort of music for a living. But yeah, so what we have here, as usual, is a piano sketch, which is one thing I recommend. Like, if you want to avoid writer's block, start with a piano sketch. This is very basic. It's just chord progression melodies and arpeggios, kind of, all on piano. So let's listen to this, this thing, and then let's uh, just get started with the, the song. Okay, so the piano sketch sounds something like this. And it's probably too melodic to be used in a trailer already. Like, uh, and one thing I don't like about the trailer genre is that you need to avoid using too much developed melodies and they need to, co- to sound conclusively. You don't need to use melodies that are too long and stuff like that. You know, it's usually best if you use a very short melody that is repetitive but doesn't tire the listener because uh, you have other things going on in the background. While here, I just, I try to be traitorish, but I also didn't give a fuck. So I'm not sure how this is going to go, but it sounds something like this. That's the idea for the intro. This is like the build up. I need to add something else here in this second repetition. Although it's different, I think it needs something more. this here is the climax kind of Then the stinger here. Mm-hmm. 
So that's the basic idea. I'm going to develop this with an orchestration with trader effects and percussion and all those things. But I pretty much wrote the main ideas, the main rhythms they want to keep, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I guess which one of my favorite part is. If you know me, you know exactly that it's this bit here. And even this part here, I think. No, sorry, I think it was here. But yeah, this sort of... That's the freaking thing I love. Like, I'm not even sure if it makes sense. It just sounds so great to me. And uh, so, yeah, basically what I'm going to do is, of course, uh, first orchestrate the whole thing in a very basic manner. And this feels very kind of scary to get back at this after you know, two years of not doing it. Ah, uh, this is the part where I'm going to realize how much I forgot or how much I hated this genre of music. Uh, this is going to be very, very weird. It's like seeing an ex-girlfriend after years and you're like, ah, um, hello. So, okay, now let's uh, maybe start with the intro. Uh, the intro is the part I always struggled with the most when writing trailer music and it's still true to this day with orchestral music you can you can do you know interesting things in the intro with trailer music you need to set the atmosphere so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to use to see if we can have like we can uh use uh, uh well let's just start with a freaking piano note as it's often the, the you know the the standard with trailer music, you know, reverb at the piano. It's usually one note. Like one distant note with loads of reverb in it and delay because it creates atmosphere. And it tells you what key we're in, you know, because this is the most fashionable thing to do. In trailer music. I'm just kidding here, by the way. So this is a Valhalla Shimmer, and it's like a, one of the craziest reverbs I know. If I crank it to the max, you're gonna see what I mean. It's like, it's, this note is a pad now, so... It's something you can use on your piano, you can use it on guitars. If you use it on guitar, it sounds freaking amazing. But to make things even better, I'm gonna use this delay bank. And change the delay time to be a bit slower. Ping pong. Less feedback. Not sure if I want four or eight. Let's try four. So the cool thing about the delay bank is that I could even, you know, do two delays. So if I press this, I'm going to have two delays. So I can do a um, four. And one six, but this is gonna be chaos. Actually, it sounds pretty okay. So let's try to. Well, whatever, let's keep it like this. I'm gonna lower the volume of the second delay. And we have our, you know, reverberated piano note. Awesome.
So other than the freaking reverberated piano notes, usually what you have is, of course, trailer booms and mostly pad-ish sounds. So we're going to see if I have a drone here. I haven't updated the, uh, the, sam the, the here this collection of favorite samples in a while. So all I might have is like these sort of nasty samples. Huh. This might work. Although it sounds nasty. And with nasty I mean like aggressive, you know? Like it sounds kinda dark. The track I want to ride needs to be, you know, trailer-ish, which means, yes, it needs to be aggressive, but I also want it to be, like, to have an emotional side. As you heard, the melodies are quite emotional, they're quite dramatic. So if I go full nuts with, like, darkness and aggressiveness, then it's gonna ruin that a bit. So that's my, my fear here. So maybe instead of using this sort of bassy drone, I'm gonna try to go with some strings. Let's see. Maybe I can use Jaeger this time. I'm gonna use these strings just to to sort of have a like a, a pad going on. I'm gonna, you know, tweak this pad too. So what we're gonna try to write here is called uh, hybrid trail music. A hybrid uh, means a hybrid between something that sounds organic and electronic, which means we can do crazy stuff on our instruments without giving a damn. So that's why I'm adding like Valhalla shimmers everywhere. I just want to, like, I want these strings to sound a bit more like a pad. So I'm going to call this. So this is reverberated piano. I need to find the better names for this. Actually, let me do one cool thing. So, uh, no, I did the wrong thing. I didn't want to close that Valhalla Shimmer. This Valhalla Shimmer needs to stay open. I wanted to open these Jaeger strings on the other contact. So this red contact here is going to be for the pad sort of instruments. So this I'm going to call it the pad, pad piano, actually, even, even if it's not. Ah, echo piano is a better name. Then I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to open the strings here. So this contact here is going to be the contact for pad instruments for, you know, sort of like it's reverberated. Uh, sounds so that I don't that can, I don't get confused because I also want to have a contact which is just for actual strings, you know, there's dry strings to do like spiccatos and stuff. So this is now strings pad, and for strings pad we're gonna use this violin patch, strings pad Jaeger, Echo piano giant. You see me renaming all those things, and this gets very, like, in the beginning it might be useless, but as you progress into writing the track, it gets very useful to know what the hell you're doing, what instrument belongs to what, etc. You know? So... That's why I do it. Now, let's go back to our strings. I wanted to make this sort of, like, drone-like. I wanted them to have a drone-like quality, so... Tremolo. 
I'm sure this is not enough. I'm going to have to layer this with something else, of course. And also, like, this is going to suck. For sure. So I'm going to do this. I want this to sound a bit more hybrid, so maybe I'm gonna layer it with the synthesizer as well. Let's try that. And I'm just experimenting here, by the way. I'm not like it's not like I have a, a formula in my mind of exactly how this is going to go. It's never like that, you know. I might like the thing is that whenever you arrange a song, of course you can go back and do what you know exactly how to do. You can write a song that sounds like the other songs you made in the past. But that's not interesting. That's not a way to to really uh, grow, in my, op in my opinion. So let's uh, just experiment a bit. So I'm going to use things that I already tried in other songs, and I'm also going to try new stuff. That sounds interesting. I mean, it sounds like shit, but it could be interesting. That's what I mean. So the phaser is going to add a bit of movement inside this sound. If I put it to 100%, it's clear what I mean. And if I, re if I you know, reduce the depth and the rate, that movement is going to be way more subtle. Still, I'm not entirely satisfied about this sound, so... Uh, hybrid pad Juggernaut I'm gonna layer this with something else Again from Juggernaut maybe Let's try to open another patch The idea behind synthesizing Is usually uh, As far as I notice As far as I am concerned for me It's usually uh, uh, the practice of taking basic sounds And making them sound uh, Nice by processing, processing them so that's what we're going to do later with these sounds. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not going to use a sub as a layer. Oh, this kind of sounds like Blade Runner stuff. If I even amplify it. Wow. Oh my god. I freaking love it. So that's how... It's like a, a, a whole new world opens up in front of you. It's like, oh my god, what the hell? Getting kind of nerdy, nerdy here. I'm not even sure this is the exact sound I need. So let's just listen how it sounds. 
So the thing I'm not liking is the release. It's like too, too fast. I actually should do, uh, no, nothing. So strings pad, here we have hybrid pad. I'm thinking of adding in more, <laughs> another layer. I'm not sure if this is good, but eh, whatever the hell, let's do it. So I wanted to add another layer. Maybe I'm going to do it on another patch though. I mean, on another contact, uh, another MIDI out. Because I want this layer to kick in, in the second part. I'm getting too sci-fi here. This is kind of out of the idea I had. And already, this is the the reason why I kind of like didn't like making trailer music. Because if you like have fun like this and you get a bit out of what you need to write, you might risk going completely outside of the trailer genre. And then you think, oh, this is so interesting and so fun. It might lead me to discover new things. But oh, no, I need to fit into the, that genre. So I cannot do it. So I felt every time I've composed that sort of music, I felt like I couldn't explore so much. And of course that led to frustration and led to, you know, having a uh, stifled growth for me. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's some people really are great at trailer music. They love it. They love to experiment inside the boundaries of it. I don't. I don't. So since this is all kind of pads, it's now a bit diff difficult to tell the rhythms. So this is going to be Blade Pad, Blade Synth, because it kind of reminds me of Blade Runner, so whatever the hell. Blade Synth, Juggernaut, uh, or rather Blade Pad, it's still kind of a pad. I would still layer this with something else, and uh, as you might have noticed, layering is a big, big part of many of what I, much of what I do, but first I want to save this, because I'm liking this... Uh, this idea. And if my computer were to crash now, I would cry, you know, tears, um, very, very bitter tears. <laughs> so let's, let's open, uh, now the second layer that I wanted to add. And you can even just add the same layer, but maybe on a higher octave, you know? So I wish there was a way to do that in Juggernaut here where you could just say, tell him, okay, Oh, 
I'm actually freaking dumb, but I can actually do it with the... Yeah, I can freaking do it with MIDI. I'm, I'm stupid, sorry. You know, when you start thinking in one mode... And actually, I'm not gonna do one okay, I'm gonna do this. I think it's too melodic now. Like, it, uh, yeah. Well, let me add a little some delay on this thing. And also, why is this being is it being signed to the same? Uh I think I need to do a smart thing where I just send all of these to yeah let's freaking do that so i'm gonna do i'm gonna open i'm gonna use parallel reverbs in this track because it's a hybrid song and uh you know it's just it's just uh some 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 instruments are gonna be way more reverb than others i think but in different ways so yeah i'm thinking about doing different reverbs now, if I remove this river that I have here, though. Okay, it's still, it's still pretty much uh, you know, reasonable, so let's freaking do this. So, uh, this is gonna be... Uh, it's gonna be pad group. Wet. Pad group. In here, in this sense here, I'm gonna send all the sort of pad instruments, the ones that really want to have lots of reverb. So this right piano, this, sorry, piano pad here, strings pad. Actually, no, this piano will be going here. This is right piano. This is uh, uh, hybrid pads. Why not? So I'm gonna send, yeah, all these three are gonna go to hybrid pads, which is going to this two, which is gonna uh, go to Mahala Shimmer here, 100%. Uh, no, actually I'm gonna, okay, so organic pads and hybrid pads, okay. Awesome. I hope this does the trick. So you go to hybrid pads. You blade pad, go to hybrid pads as well. So now Great. <laughs> Piano pad and hybrid pads. That's what I need. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sorry guys, if this feedback, uh, not feedback, this um, track from scratch is actually more confusing than usual. It's because I'm experimenting. So that's a natural consequence of, the, of composing music in a way where you experiment.
So I want the reason why I split this blade pad, etc., is because I actually wanted to add delay on this thing. So the whole freaking routing uh, chaos I just <laughs> took care of was just for the reverb sake. So for the delay sake. So this needs to be sent to channel five five. Oh, I didn't realize I left all the Valalas open here. I need to take them out. I need to have way more reverb, my friend. So, did they just screw up the whole balance? Okay, so yeah, I want to repeat this part. No, 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 no. Okay. And here, sorry. I want to take the chance, to, the, the occasion to remind you that I have no freaking idea what I'm doing right now. That's always the rule for when I compose music. But can't, no, so I have no idea, but I cannot do. So this is just the introduction of the intro, I would say. And then this is where it really begins. Begins. You have... Bah, 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 bah. So I kind of messed up because actually, actually this part is supposed to repeat itself. Uh, like this. And it plays again.
Mm. Not sure what I did here. Uh, but let's see. So, um, I could actually just copy paste this part on the strings. Because again, this was just uh, meant to be a layer for the strings, which I actually worked on way more than I did on the strings. So, good job, me, I guess. Let's see how this part sounds on the strings. So what I wanted to add actually was a base. Now I'm going to try to do that with Nexus. Hoping it against hope that it still works. I haven't opened Nexus in... Oh, it's still loyal to me. What a good boy. Okay, let's try to use one of my favorite, favorite bass lines for Nexus. No, not this one. Not this one. Oh, where is it? Oh, Tron bass, maybe? Oh, there's this guy. I freaking love this guy. Reminds me kind of a Dio sex. So, uh, I'm gonna link this to... Uh, I don't know, random instance here of uh, my mixer. I'm gonna call this Base Art Foundation. Because that's what it's called in Nexus. So whatever. Temporary name, it's gonna work. Basically, I wanted to have a bit of movement. Uh, with movement, I mean energy flowing in the, this track after a while. Because, you know, you have pads, you have the intro, but after a while you need to go to the build-up. And before you do, you kind of want to bring the energy in the... The, you know, the final bits of the intro. Actually, at least I want to do that in my track now. So let's see how I can do that with the bass. So there are a few cool things about this bass. So first thing, it sounds freaking amazing. And the other cool thing is that if you do this, it kind of opens up with the velocity. I can also do that, do it with the automation if I want, but I'm going to use velocity in this case. So. It has a bit of internal reverb that I want to get rid of. Uh, or actually, no, it's not the internal reverb. It's the reverb of the freaking pads here. So I'm going to use... Uh, this is going to be the orchestra group actually. Orchestra group Rai, orchestra 
group. Wait. And here I'm going to just use a normal Valhalla room. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this here, but uh, base arpeggio. Or arpeggi. I'm going to call these arpeggi. Arpeggiators. Man, I'm so slow. No, um, no, uh, this goes against what I just wrote. Uh, wait, I kind of lost track of... What, what did I want to do, actually? So let me actually listen to this once again. Where do I want to go with this? Okay, so let's see. This is a bit of a long intro and I think already we're outside the trailer realm because 50 seconds of intro mm, maybe it might work but i'm not entirely sure so let's see, let's see where we can go with this track uh but eh, you know whatever Right now, I'm actually asking myself, why the hell didn't I layer this, since they are supposed to be the same? Mm, no idea, but 
Yeah, let's just keep them like that. With me, I mean the hybrid pad and the strings pad, but yeah, let's uh, just for. And I'm also wondering if I reflected this uh, sketch that I had here. I might be on a completely different chord progression, completely different melody. That's okay. That's okay, guys. We're just experimenting. So that means we're just having fun and discovering the wonders of music making. So I want to keep this sort of like re repetitive piano note going. I'm just gonna have to do this. Not entirely sure how about how this melody goes on here. By the way, I just noticed that this sounds like Ivan Torrent. So, uh, inherently, without knowing, I was kind of emulating his sound. Now it's clear. Like this sort of reverberated pads with this pad, with um, with this piano. It's what he would do. But I'm not bummed out about that. I mean, Ivan Torrent's music is freaking amazing. And also, it's impossible to write music without borrowing stuff from someone else now this melody i think it's like this melody is mine etc it's just the this whole like sonic uh palette or sonic taste is reminiscent of you know ivan torrent
Okay, so to not get lost into the sense of hybrid space, I'm gonna try now to add something trailerish, other than other than the bass, of course. Which, by the way, I want uh, this bass to sound even more dramatic. Now, the other cool thing about the bass, I told you, you can either do the sort of like making it open up with velocity, or you can also do it with automation. Now, this is something internally, it's a parameter internal to Nexus. This cutoff thing. If I move this, it's just gonna make my bass sound more open or more closed. So I'm gonna go here, click on this button, move this, and then now this is linked to this. I go here, I press edit uh, events. I would like to edit events into the piano roll, but whatever. Actually, I can, yeah, let's freaking do it from edit events. So basically, I'm just going to you know, draw a random line so I can do it from the piano roll now. So this guy, I want it in the middle. Which is, you know, if I did this with automation, it would be much easier, but you wouldn't read the automation from inside the pattern. So that would, that would be a kind of problematic when I would play it, play it back. So. so now I have the internal, like I have that, that base opening up and because of the velocity changes. But now if I also do that, it's just going to open up progressively as the track is going to become big. Uh, it's you know, going to go, go on. So this bass is going to become bigger and bigger in a very subtle way, of course. Or maybe not so subtle. So let's, you know, lower it a bit. 50 to, 50 to 60% should be good. But in this final part, I actually want to do a, a you know, more steep sort of growth so from 60 to 70, just to have that extra edge at the end. So let's see. Yeah. Um, I might add some delay on this bass harp foundation later. But now I wanted to add some uh, trailer f trailer stuff, trailer things. Oh, look, the intro is already twice, long, twice as long as it was in the piano sketch. We totally went overboard and we don't care. So let's actually save this. And then I want to add some trailer effects and some maybe spiccato strings so we can still keep this thing in the trailer domain. Okay, let's, um, let's start by adding the strings maybe. So this is the pad group, pad group. These are strings, strings. Uh, I'm gonna try to use a Jaeger, instead of Metropolis Arc. Let's see how it works, how it's gonna work out. Maybe I'm gonna use them both. But for now, let's open some Jaeger strings, cellos. Let's start with some cellos because we are still in the intro. We're gonna keep the big, you know, tonality, high tonalities for later. So you got cello, I'm gonna go here. Open my cello's presets, Jaeger. JGR stands for Jaeger uh, and not Jean-Gabriel Renault, like my, my friend Jean-Gabriel Renault told me <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's his name. It's like, oh, you are stealing my template. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's Jaeger. Yeah, he was just fooling around, of course. Uh, there is something wrong. Which is the strings going to the wrong channel. The strings need to go. Oh, oh, now I messed up all the, the whole thing. So. Oh, no. Well, no, no matter. Because I say I messed up because uh, these things were routed in a way that was very specific, but not anymore. Uh, but well, whatever. Let's continue. So. Why is there so much freaking reverb on this thing?
Oh, it's because I had the Valhalla Shimmer open here. So let me actually go back and listen for a second here. And we totally went to another different direction. But whatever the hell, we're gonna do what sounds great. And this sounds cool. Cool. So. One thing they are surely going to do is layer this, uh, this sort of arpeggio here. Not sure if it's like there's a huge delay here on the strings. I'm not sure if it's Jaeger's fault or if it's like FL Studio with plugin delay compensation here. We're gonna discover by opening Metropolis Arc. Let's open a patch of low strings on Metropolis Arc and compare. so loud that I can only hear, even hear the bass anymore. Eh, hey, whatever the hell, I'm just gonna... shift this to start up the audio. But it's so weird and they have to shift it so much. Uh, well, I'll figure it out later. And of course I could also use the sample start here, I think. Let 
Where did I want to go with this? I'm not entirely sure about this D sharp 5 anymore here. This fact that I have to shift my strings makes it very hard to write.
That reverb tail will be have to will, will ah, I will have to cut that reverb tail. These parts are probably too loud uh, compared with the rest. These shallows need to be layered with something else, of course. Maybe I can... Yeah, I can actually just play notes here.
that might not be enough. Whatever, I don't want to spend time taking care of details for now, that will be for the second stage of writing this. The first stage of my writing of any song that I write is always sketching. So we're just gonna try to sketch something very basic. Now I wanted to try to have some uh, big our bones. That sounded dramatic. So, trailer booms. Going to percussion group. Dry and wet. For the percussion group, for now, I'm just gonna use the same Valhalla room, but that we probably change later on. And also, less reverb on this. Let's tail. Holy crap, what the hell? Okay, so I'm gonna crossfade between the two because I like the attack of this one, I like the tail of the other one. But if I leave them together like that, it's gonna like destroy the mix. So I'm just gonna do this. Like, uh, I'm gonna link this. To an automation, or it does this. Now the other one. I might even link it to the same automation. Uh, yeah, let's do something cool. So this automation is gonna go from fifty percent, from zero to fifty percent. So if I do this, it's a normal volume automation. I call this trailer booms crossfade. So on one hand, it's going to reduce the volume of this one. Probably too, too drastic, probably. On the other hand, in here, it's going to do the same thing, but the opposite. So you can do that by linking it and doing one minus input. It does the opposite of the automation that you just draw. Oh, and uh, yeah, actually, I don't want to do exactly the opposite. I want to do. Uh, wait. Like, I want this to start from half. 
So I need to Yeah. Probably. Yeah, it's not perfect. But that's what I needed. So I guess or actually I can do this. Probably. I think it was better before. So let's just do multiplied by zero five. Okay, so these two are kind of linked to their brothers now. I said they're brothers. Okay. Still doesn't have the tail I wanted to have. What if I actually sent this a bit to the Panala Shimmer Reverb as well? Hmm. Eh, hey, yeah, why not? Whatever the hell. Same for the trader hits. Just to leave that that hiss. Oh. 
Although I think I need to add some uh, low cat here. I'm gonna do something very creepy. Not creepy, but <laughs> say like a creepy sound hidden in the background of that. So there is an impact that I read that I know from a pack, it's an EDM pack called Leviathan. And this impact it has sort of like a whisper in it. I don't remember exactly which one it is, so we're gonna find it. Leviathan. Oh, there it is. That was easy. So this sort of thing is gonna be inside, like it's gonna be a layer in our hit here. But since I just want the hiss, I can just add this sort of high pass filter. And just link this to the trader hits. So now it's gonna be fed into the Valhalla, the Valhalla. Maybe I can also do like, uh, these parameters here, I can probably make the attack less. Or, you know, I can do actually volume automation. Why the hell am I doing these things? So let's just go and do a volume automation. The reason why I do the volume automation from this parameter instead of this is that if I do it from this, then I can still, you know, move this and tweak this to lower the volume of that sample while withholding the information that I did for the automation. Well, if I did the automation on this one and I wanted to lower the volume, I would have to lower the volume on the automation because if I lowered it here, then the automation will still do the fact the hell it wanted to do. So I do the automation on a secondary parameter. So, I, so I'm free to use this one parameter at will. So that's why I'm doing it from that uh, knob there. It's just uh, something that I'm comfortable doing. Yeah, no. now it's much better. Though it sounds so sharp. What if I stretch it? Hmm. No, I don't think it's a good idea. Just so it sounds super mono. But let's see how it sounds in context with the trailer hit. That shall sound tremendously quiet for some reason. Uh, where is it? Well, I just have to layer that, won't I?
there are so many things I want to add at the same time and going crazy. So uh, before layering the cello, I actually wanted to do like another arpeggio. Uh, this time it's going to be a high arpeggio, not this guy. Maybe that guy? No. Not you. Yeah, this guy. So, this here is an ARP loop. And if you have a patch like this in Nexus and you want to use the single note, you can do it. You can go on ARP here and you disable the loop. I can, I can play whatever the hell I want to play. So what I wanted to play is the arpeggio we have, we have in our sketch. So the... Um, uh, I'm not sure where to start though with it. And guess what we're gonna do? Of course, automations. So this is gonna start a bit, um, a bit lower than the other one. So maybe thirty-five percent. It's too high already. Twenty-five percent. Ten percent. Our strings still sound delayed. Why is that? This is getting on my nerves. What is going to happen if I do reset manual latency on all tracks? I think it's better. I better save before discovering that. This reset this cannot be undone. I'm not sure if I want to do this. Fuck, let's not, let's not do it.
You know, at the beginning of the video where I said that the intro is the part where I struggle with the most? There. <laughs> now, now you know, that's, that's the proof. Uh, it really sucks, like writing intros for, for trailer songs. Because you cannot unleash the full power, but you cannot even do like... like I struggle with finding the right balance, that's what I'm trying to say. Um... Maybe I should have also used Metropolis Arc instead of Jaeger because I'm, I'm just used to the loudness of Metropolis Arc. And that's a bit of a hindrance there because I, you shouldn't get to the point where, you know, you're symbiotic, like your, your music writing is symbiotic with the libraries you use. You should always learn, like, know how to use libraries. Um, like, you, you should rely on your skills more than your libraries. That's what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So the fact that not using Metropolis Arc puts me a bit in uh, difficulty. It's not very great. I'm gonna grow out of that. But Metropolis Arc is awesome. Like, it's not that I shouldn't use it. It's, I, I, maybe I should also rely on other libraries a lot. Maybe this will work better than the other version. use Metropolis Arc. <laughs> uh, I'm so... I'm so weak for this library.
I fall for it every time. Let's see if it's gonna make this part sound better. Or if I should just change stuff. Uh, strings arc one. Spiccatos. Unison. Actually, it sounded way better on, on Juggernaut. Oh, Jaeger, sorry. Because it's more dry. I'm gonna use Jaeger. This indecision is like, it's killing me on the inside. Jaeger Violas, let's go.
I'm totally not pleased with how this is sounding now. Sadly. But I could hear, I, I love the pads, but I don't like the orchestration so much. And for some reason I cannot make it uh, stand out. Still need to figure that part out. Oh. Oh. Wait a second. Let me actually check something here. This old span is gonna tell us what is wrong with this rack. Yeah, we need more mids, I think. Uh, they're not being provided by anything else. So maybe, yeah, I was thinking of adding this piano where I'm going to play chords to fit those mids, to, to fill those mids a bit more. I freaking hate this delay, oh my god. Oh my god. I 
I never experienced something like that before. Maybe it's FL Studio 20 or something. But I think this is the update where they did fix the plugin DA compensation. Like they fixed it on this update. So it's weird that it does it now that it's fixed. Like, why? Okay, now what we need more of is a bit more highs. Uh, I'm gonna try to create a synth with armor if I don't have a patch ready. I have a witch. Uh, no. Oh, I remember this patch. No, it's not the one I thought of. But I guess I could use it. Let's remove this. Uh, let's try. Oh my god, no, 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 no. Get out of my face. Uh, terrible keyboard solo. <laughs> oh god, what the hell was that? Why did I make that? Oh my... Okay, so we have this default. Super loud, by the way. So what we're gonna do first is add legato. This sounds like Game Boy music. Now it sounds a bit creepy. Uh, okay, I'm gonna make this a super cell. So stupid. Is there a way to copy part A to part B? I forgot. It's been a long time ever since I used Butcher here. Um, no, uh, armor. No, yeah, armor. Copy part to this part, but I want to use a bit of a different sound here.
This is terrible on so many levels, but let's see how it sounds with the other arpeggiators. Still terrible. Well, failed attempt at layering this freaking arpeggiator. Let's not do that. Let's just, you know, keep this as it is. more can we go to the orchestra because the pads sound quite big to me uh. maybe what we lack is a leading melody maybe our solo cello will lead the way Not if I play it. <laughs> okay. I'll just have to do it then. I knew from the beginning what I needed to add. I just didn't want to do it now. I'm gonna use my kazoo. No, just kidding. I wanted to use uh, brass. But it feels like... Uh, I don't know. It feels like I'm, I'm building too much if I use brass from the beginning. So maybe I'm gonna stick to actually the trombones.
Of course, they are wrong. They are going to the mix to the wrong mixer group. I'm gonna send them here. Gonna do some sustain chords with the uh, trombones.
I didn't want to do this for right now, damn it.
I'm not sure if I like this at all or not. Uh, let's add the riser though. Just because of you need risers before the end of intros. So, where is our riser further? There is. Organic, maybe? Not dark. I'm not sure about the harmonization at the end there, but I actually just wanted it there. Like I wanted to put something, you know, different. Because that's what I do before transitions. What the hell? This might work better. Ba, 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 bam. I cannot do that for now.
the hell is happening? Why the fuck did I did I not record it? Uh, so it was like na 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 na. Okay. No. Where did this start? This cello line might be the saving grace of this whole track. No! Oh. This is so messy, it's like crazy. So freaking muddy and stuff. It's filthy, really. And I think it's also because of that friggin' piano, too much echo. I'm afraid of what that cello is going to sound like once I play it with the rest. Because this arrangement seems like when I, when I work on, indiv individual, uh, on the individual parts, they sound cool. But when I play it with the whole thing, it sounds like shit. For some reason. It's a very improbable mixture of instruments. Like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I have no idea what this is. But, uh, what does this make sense? I have no idea. But I think the cello needs to start from before.
this doesn't make sense at all. Not sure if it's going to fit the freaking trailer standards. And not sure if I should finish this song, finish this song or just uh, leave it hanging on my hard drive like a ghost forever. I don't like to do that anymore, you know, whenever, before when I was, you know, less experienced, I used to have a folder full of unfinished projects and, uh, you know, I would open the folder and be like, oh, there's too many unfinished things, I'm going to start a new one. And that sort of habit led me to finish way less songs than I should have. So now I'm trying to only have maximum two pending projects in my whips folder. And if... I want to start a new one. I will delete one of the two if, uh, if I if um if I have to start a new one. So that that way, I'm really thinking. Okay, if I want to start a new one, I'm gonna let go of another one, which means I'm gonna lose all the pro all the work on that one. Do I really want to lose all the pro all the work? And if the answer is yes, it means the project was really bad. If the answer is no, it would means that the project is probably worth finishing just for for the sake of it. And sometimes when I finish those. In the end, they're like amazing. And that happened with the Pirates of the Caribbean track, actually, which is one of my most popular, popular tracks uh, on YouTube uh, that I published last, last year. So I'm like, you never know. But quite frankly, I think this one will go nowhere. <laughs> yeah. The last thing I want to add before I save and close this project and take a break is actually a sub base. So I'm going to go here. Uh, I'm going to add my signature sub base called string sub number one. Oh, that's a very creative name, but that's the one. Though I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Of course, what I'm sure what I'm going to do with it, I'm going to do this. Yeah. I'm also gonna add string sub number two because these two usually go together. Uh, number two. They sound so awesome. Very gentle, but also they have the sort of sound to it. So it's like a, sub, a basic sub, but with an added value in it. So, uh, strings sub. I love that solo cello line. That's literally the all oh, in this hour and a half I spent on this track, or even more, like two hours. No idea how much time I spent on that. That solo cello line is worth all the time I spent on this, literally. And it's like five seconds of cello, but this thing is worth everything. It's like ah, so. I, if I'm going to finish this song, it's going to be because of this. If I'm not going to finish it, this will be reused in another track for sure. And by the way, guys, uh, as I mentioned in my personal Facebook pa Facebook page, I'm currently thinking of thinking of buying a cello, like a real cello, 
But I'm like, oh, should I do it, should I not? So what I wanted to do is actually harmonize this. Uh, not sure how. Maybe I'm gonna use some violins from Cinematic Strings too. Although being violins, they're gonna be on a... Did my computer just crash there? If it crashed, this is gonna be the saddest day of the week. Because it means that I lost the entire project. The tension. The tension keeps on rising. We will not, will not know the destiny of this Apple Studio project until my computer decides to stop freezing. So, yeah, I, when it does that for such a long amount of time, sometimes it really means that it's crashing. Oh, it's saved. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The tension there was real. That was freaking real. It's like a riser of many voices together. Uh, Jesus, I was I was really ready to cry there. Mamma mia. OK, OK, we're, we're back. We're back in the game. That mini heart attack. It was kind of, you know, I felt that. So, <clears throat> back to what I want, what wanted to do. I wanted to harmonize this solo cello. And I'm actually going to... So I created this channel for the solo cello. I'm going to send it there. So it's like instrument number five, I think. Mm, the violins. Uh... I know exactly what to do. I was kidding. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Let's open a cello, actually. And... Uh...
Okay. That is that is um, it's good. It's um, it's nice. So let's just leave that there. We added our sub bass. We added to harmonize our solo cello. I think we are like a three hours of writing this intro. Three hours for an intro, which is not complete. It's not balanced. Good job, Alex. You know, and I think it's a, we can we can really take a break on this for a second. So solo cello number two. Solo cello number one. Let me listen to the orchestra. Well, it seems like it makes my computer cry and also the cellos kind of disappeared, so I need to increase their dynamics a bit. But yeah, my, my uh, CPU here is like starting to go nuts. Which always happens when the orchestration becomes a bit more complex. Yeah, this is like muddy as hell. Like if I check out God, let's listen to it with the rest. Whatever, I'm gonna, you know, this is the intro. This is the intro, guys. This is gonna be the build up, the part that comes after. Uh, but first, uh, yeah, I need to work on the transition and also uh, need to, you know, sleep on this and wake up tomorrow and see if it's still okay or if it's like putrid and horrible when I listen to it with fresh ears. So for now, let's just save this. Uh, it was amazing to write that shallow line. The rest was kind of meh. <laughs> but let's see. If it's, uh, this sounds good, uh, when I come back to it, I'm going to write the build up. If it doesn't, maybe I'm going to start another track. Uh, let's see. Well, for now, that's all. Okay, so that was the footage of me composing the first part. And for the next parts, again, you can get those on Patreon, along with many other rewards, like the stems of my songs and all the other Composing from Scratch episodes. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, once I finish orchestrating this track, etc., I think I'm going to make a tutorial about it. So if you want to learn stuff about it, if you want, to, want me to tell you things, explain you things about this track, then let me know in the comments the questions you have so I can you know, take note of those and answer those in the tutorials I will make after finishing this piece of music. But for now, that is all. Thank you for watching, as usual, and I'll see you in the next episodes. Bye-bye.